Hello, everyone. This is Professor Sexton with our last video lecture on poetry. This one is over Pet Parker's My Lover is a Woman and Marlon Riggs' Tongues Untied. Unlike all the previous um, video lectures on poetry, I won't be sharing the two, poetry, uh, two poems in this video. Uh, and even though these poems are relatively long, um, this is perhaps going to be the shortest video lecture. Um, I do want to let you know ahead of time that both of these poems use words that are that that can be offensive, um, uh, particularly Marlon Riggs poems. Uh, and so I just wanted to let you know that ahead of time. Um, both of these poems deal with the same topic uh, to a certain extent. So in both Pet Parker's poem and Marlon Riggs poems, and both of these poems the speakers are African-American. But in Pet Parker's poem, she's an African-American lesbian. And in Marlon Riggs' poem, he's an African-American gay man. And both of their poems deal with them trying to reconcile their identities as African-Americans, but also their identities as queer or lesbian or gay. Um, and in Pet Parker's poem, she speaks about her, her poem, because like, look at the title of her poem. Her poem is My Lover is a Woman. But in the poem, she, the speaker speaks about being both a lesbian and being a lesbian, a color who has a white lover. And throughout the poem, the, each section of it ends with this refrain where she talks about both she talks about her family and her family's reaction, um, her sisters, her mother, who constantly ends with, what child is this? And then she imagined her father's reaction. And the father's dead because she says the father turning over in his grave, which I found interesting in this poem because in a lot of ways, she's assuming the way that her father react will would react, yet she's not she doesn't really know this you know this is how she thinks he will react and as she goes through the poem the poem also deals with words like the different words that have been used to um um to ostracize her both as a woman of color and also as a lesbian and also as a woman of color who has a white lover and so these are all of the things that she deals with in this poem and it's this it's this trying to reconcile her issue of being a black lesbian, her being black, and also being a black lesbian who has a white lover. And so as you're reading that poem, you you see how she struggles to try to reconcile those two things. And as you're reading that poem, one of the things that I want you to think about is to think about her struggles uh, and how she writes about those struggles, um, what what she tends to focus on, and whether her poem ends in an op optimistic uh, light. Uh, Marlon Riggs' poem also is the same thing, uh, uh, in a sense. Uh, his is a little bit more detailed because what he does is he kind of traces his life, you know, at the age of six, uh, when he first learns that, you know, he's somewhat different than other boys, um, and how in the black community as a gay man, he was kind of ostracized, um, even though it, it was a more of a sense of him claiming that identity, because in his poem, he notes that a lot of the other black boys in his neighborhood did things with other boys as well. But the difference was that with the speaker of Marlon Riggs poem, he didn't see an issue with it. Um, and then it shows as how he moves to an all white high school or predominantly white high school. And so you see this conflict with him in terms of both his, his blackness and also a sense of his queerness um, and the sense of trying to fit in. Uh, he talks about moving to San Francisco and his experiences in San Francisco are very interesting because in San Francisco, similar to Pet Parker's poem, he tends to seek white lovers. Um, and Pet Parker doesn't go into detail about this in her poem, but for Marlon Riggs' poem, 
he tends to seek white lovers just because he had felt so ostracized from his black community. But in San Francisco, he started to look around and he started to notice that how black gay men weren't really a part of the gay culture. So it was a sense that for Ray Speaker, he felt neither at home in the black community and he felt neither at home in the gay community. So it's like this double sense of being ostracized. And Pet Parker uh, in her poem, My Lover is a Woman, speaks about those same things. However, I think that the speaker in Pat Parker's poem handles this realization differently than the speaker in Marlon Riggs' poem. Because in Riggs' poem, towards the end, he comes to realize that as a Black gay man, that in the gay community, there's no real space for him as a Black man. And he begins to come to an appreciation and a love of self that it almost seems that like in Rick's poem that the reason why he had sought attention from white men was because he had never really learned to love himself as a black man. And towards the end of the poem, he begins to speak that he saw the beauty of black men for the first time. Um, and so that is the nature of his poem. So in a lot of ways, both of these poems deal with a lot of similar issues, yet there are some differences in how Pat Parker and Marlon Riggs approach their topics. Uh, one of the things that I do want you to think about too, um, in terms of these poems, is to think about their titles. Uh, you know, Pat Parker's title, My Lover is a Woman, uh, you know, what does that emphasize? And think about um, Marlon Riggs' poem, Tongues Untied. And what is exactly does that mean, that the tongues are untied? Um, and um, so those things are very important. Your discussion board post for these two poems is actually a comparison contrast one, uh, where it asks you to either look at a similarity in the two poems or to look at a difference in the two poems. And so when you log into the discussion board post, um, that's uh, more detailed there, so you'll see that. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for these two poems. As I said, I'm not going to go into super detail about them because they're super long, but at the same time, they're pretty understandable as well. Um, this is, and these, this was our last poetry lesson as well. So from here on out, uh, we'll move to drama in the next round. All right, everyone take care, and I'll see you in our next video lecture. Bye.